We're a pretty big park. During peak season, we could have up to 25,000 people a day coming through the front gate. Besides a dozen roller coasters and two major water park attractions, we've got 15 full-service restaurants, three dozen quick-service locations, and more than 50 mobile food stands and carts all over the park. In a typical season, we'll go through almost 200,000 pounds of hamburger and 100 miles of hot dogs laid end to end. We cook up a lot more than just hot dogs and hamburgers because we cater to kids from all ages. I guess I'm still a kid at heart, so working here is kind of a guilty pleasure. But I'm also a kid with big responsibilities. And because of all our venues and high volume, we've got a huge job cut out for us when it comes to food safety. Yeah, our first line of defense is both the most basic and the most critical. What I'm talking about here is personal hygiene. Why is it important? Because employees can contaminate food so easily, it's scary. There's a lot of ways they can do it, but it often happens when they transfer harmful microorganisms to the food they touch. And a lot of the time, these microorganisms, which can cause an illness, can come from the employees themselves. Employees can contaminate food when they either have a foodborne illness or they've been around someone who has one. If the employee is vomiting, has diarrhea or jaundice, the yellowing of the eyes or skin, or if they've got uncovered infected cuts on their hands or arms, there's a good chance they'll pass along the contamination. There's also a risk of contamination if they've touched anything that can contaminate their hands. And then who knows how many times we overlook employees who might be carrying foodborne pathogens, especially someone who looks like they're healthy. With some illnesses, like hepatitis A, a person is most infectious several weeks before symptoms even appear. With others, the pathogens can remain in a person's system for months after all signs of infection have ended. Then there's people who carry pathogens but don't become ill themselves. But guess what? They can still infect co-workers and customers by transferring pathogens to the food they handle. People do things that can spread pathogens without knowing it. To keep from causing a foodborne illness, you should pay close attention to what you do with your hands. That means you should avoid scratching your scalp or running your fingers through your hair. You also shouldn't rub your ears or touch pimples or infected wounds. And don't wipe or touch your nose or cough or sneeze into your hand. You should also avoid certain actions to prevent the spread of pathogens. That includes wearing a dirty uniform and spitting in the operation. You can minimize the chances of this happening by establishing a personal hygiene program for your operation that spells out specific hygiene policies. Once the policies are in place, you need to enforce them, and that means training your employees to adopt the right practices. Here's what you have to make sure your employees know and do. They have to know how to wash their hands properly and when it's required. They have to know how to take care of their hands and how to use gloves properly. They must also know what they can and can't wear when handling food. And they must understand your policies about smoking, eating, drinking, and chewing gum and tobacco. Lastly, your employees should recognize the importance of reporting any illness or injury before they begin working. Of all the behaviors I just mentioned, Proper hand washing is, without a doubt, the most critical. Just imagine what could happen as a result of hands that haven't been washed properly or when necessary. Let's suppose an employee at one of our locations doesn't know he has hepatitis A. And he just returned to the kitchen after using the restroom, and he didn't wash his hands. He heads over to the sandwich making station to assemble some hamburgers for a children's birthday party going on out front. And he's asked to help out by putting the finishing touches on the birthday cake. The kids eat the sandwiches. Some more sandwiches. And some cake. And then some more cake. And then the kids pose for a picture with one of our mascots. Who poses for a lot of pictures with a lot of kids. And you get the picture. And that's why I'll repeat that proper hand washing is absolutely critical to food safety. It's your responsibility to train employees how to do it properly and then make sure they'd make a habit of doing it right. 
So here's the right way to wash your hands. First, you should wet them with running water as hot as you can comfortably stand. Next, you should apply soap. Then scrub your hands and arms for 10 to 15 seconds, and make sure to clean under the fingernails and between each of your fingers. Thoroughly rinse all the soap off under running water, and dry your hands and arms with a single-use paper towel or warm air hand dryer. Now here's something that most people don't think about. If you turn off the faucet after washing your hands, you've just recontaminated it. That's why you should train your employees to use a paper towel to turn off the faucet. And the same goes for touching the restroom door. If you're washing your hands in a restroom, use a paper towel to open it. So that's how the whole hand washing process needs to go to do the job right. Now here's when everyone's required to do it. Employees have to wash their hands on site before they start work for the day. They should also do it after using the restroom, after touching their hair, face, or body, after sneezing, coughing, or using a tissue. And here's something that surprises most people. You have to wash your hands after smoking, eating, drinking, or chewing gum or tobacco. You should also do it after handling chemicals that might affect the safety of food. Obviously, you do it after taking out the garbage and after clearing tables or bussing dirty dishes. You need to do it after touching any clothing or aprons, and after handling money. You also have to, after touching anything else that may contaminate your hands, such as unsanitized equipment or work surfaces. Lastly, you should wash your hands before and after handling raw meat, poultry, and fish. Some operations include the use of hand antiseptics in their personal hygiene program. Hand antiseptics are liquids or gels that are used to lower the number of pathogens on the skin. If used in the operation, they must comply with Food and Drug Administration standards. And you should also check your local regulatory requirements. You should only use hand antiseptics after hand washing, never in place of it. And make sure you wait for it to dry before you touch food or equipment. As important as proper hand washing is, hands need other regular care to ensure they won't transfer microorganisms to food. To help keep our food safe, I make sure that everyone who handles food here knows and follows specific guidelines. And you should do the same thing in your operation. That means keeping fingernails short and clean. The longer the fingernails, the more difficult it is to keep them clean. It also means not wearing false fingernails. False and acrylic nails can be difficult to keep clean, and it's possible they could break off into the food. Nail polish should also not be worn. That's because polish can disguise dirt under the nails, and it can flake off into the food. Some jurisdictions may allow false fingernails and nail polish, provided single-use gloves are worn. So check your local requirements to be safe. If you've got any cuts or wounds on your hands or arms, cover them with clean bandages, and wear clean gloves or a finger cot over the bandage at all times. There's another aspect of hand care that's very important, and that's the use of gloves. When they're used properly, the gloves can help keep food safe by creating a barrier between hands and food. Now, here's what we tell our managers to keep in mind when purchasing gloves for food handlers. You should only buy disposable gloves that are specifically designed for handling food, and they must never be washed and reused. You should also provide a variety of sizes. Gloves that are too big will not stay on the hand, and those that are too small will tear or rip easily. You should also make sure that gloves are never used in place of hand washing. Hands must be washed before putting gloves on and when changing to a new pair. When should you change gloves? As soon as they become soiled or torn, and before beginning a different task. You should also make a point of changing them at least every four hours during continual use and, and more often when necessary. It's also critical to change gloves after handling raw meat and before handling cooked or ready-to-eat food. This is non-negotiable. If your area allows bare hand contact with ready-to-eat food, you must have policies for employee health and train employees in hand washing and personal hygiene practices. Check your local regulatory requirements. Okay, that covers hand care. Now let's talk about overall personal cleanliness. My managers know that everyone who works for them should shower or bathe before coming to work. The same goes for your people and they should take particular care to clean their hair since oily, dirty hair can harbor pathogens. Since what your employees wear can affect the safety of the food you serve, you have to make sure they observe your dress standards. 
Generally speaking, they should wear a clean hat or other hair restraint. It'll keep hair away from food and keep the food handler from touching it. Employees should wear clean clothing. Dirty clothes may carry pathogens and can give customers a bad impression of your operation. And if your employee wears an apron, it should be removed when leaving food preparation areas, especially when leaving to use the restroom or to handle trash. Your employee should also remove jewelry from their hands and arms before preparing food and working around food preparation areas. This includes watches, bracelets, and rings. The only exception is a ring with a plain band. You also need to have policies regarding smoking, eating, drinking, chewing gum or tobacco. In the process of doing any of those things, saliva can be transferred to the employee's hands or directly to food or food contact surfaces being handled. For that very good reason, employees must not smoke, chew gum or tobacco, or eat or drink when preparing or serving food. Nor should they do any of those things in areas used to clean utensils and equipment. Some jurisdictions allow employees to drink in these areas, provided they use a covered container with a straw, like Willie's here. Check your local requirements to be safe. Now your food safety policies also need to address the health of the people who work for you. We tell all our managers to encourage their employees to report health problems before starting work. If they become ill during the course of the work day, they must immediately report their condition. There are several instances where you'll need to restrict a food handler from working with or around food, or exclude them from working within the establishment. If the food handler has a sore throat with a fever, you cannot allow them to work with or around food. And if your establishment primarily serves a high-risk population, such as seniors in a nursing home, that employee should be excluded from the establishment. If you have a food handler who's vomiting or is suffering from diarrhea as a result of an infectious illness, the employee must be excluded from the establishment. We don't allow any employee to return to work unless he or she has been symptom-free for 24 hours, and neither should you. But if they have a written release from a medical practitioner allowing their return to work, they should be permitted to do so. Now, if an employee has jaundice, they have to be excluded from the establishment, and they should not be allowed to return to work unless they have a written release from a medical practitioner. If a food handler has been diagnosed with a foodborne illness caused by Salmonella typhi, Shigella, Shigatoxin-producing E. coli, Hepatitis A virus, or norovirus, that employee has to be excluded from the premises, and you have to notify the local regulatory agency. Before they can return to work, they have to be cleared by the local regulatory agency and or the employee's medical practitioner. Practicing good, basic personal hygiene is both fundamental and critical to the prevention of foodborne illness. To keep your food, your customers, and your business safe, your employees have to do more than learn about your policies. They need to fully understand them, they need to take them to heart, and they have to put them into practice. Proper personal hygiene it needs to become part of everyone's routine, and making sure that happens has to be part of your routine. Never take your eye off the ball when it comes to paying attention to detail, and never relax your standards. You just can't afford to. Even though I work in an amusement park, I guess I'm not much of a thrill seeker. I get all the thrills I need walking through the midway, watching healthy families and friends enjoy themselves. I guess that makes me a grown-up at heart. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>